welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Hila Dadia, we have with us Dr. Virendra Chauhan, head APAC at Energy Aspects, joining in. Welcome to the show, Virendra, and always a pleasure to speak to you and get insights from you as well. Uh, these are crucial times, important times that we're seeing in terms of where uh, the oil and gas market is concerned on an overall basis. Clearly, right now, what is the kind of view that you hold? Because we're talking of sanctions on Russia. We're talking of what the supply loss could be. So overall, what's the view that you're holding? Yeah, so I mean, uh, Russia is a critical supplier to global oil markets. Um, it was exporting you know, close to 5 million barrels per day of crude. And I think the critical part about Russia is it's a low cost producer. Now, if Europe, for example, wants to replace a low cost producer, it has to do so with a higher cost producer and therefore that pushes up the global cost of production and puts upward pressure on that prices. Right, so, so clearly if you see Varendra in terms of where uh, the sanctions are concerned, uh, do you think these sanctions will continue for some time? And if that happens, clearly, you know, how do you think will we be able to compensate for the loss? Because OPEC has clearly come out and said that they will not be able to compensate the Russian supply loss current, taking the current demand scenario into consideration, uh, because they're looking at almost waking up for 7 million barrels per day. Yeah, so I mean, uh, that that's the kind of important question. And I think what has taken a little bit of steam out the market for, uh, but we see it very much as a short term fix is this global SPR release. So it's led by the US, but a number of IEA members have also joined in. So in total, I think um, over the past six months or so, we've seen the release of 280 million barrels of crude from the um, uh, SPR. Now that in total is around 20% of what they have in storage for these kind of geopolitically induced um, or otherwise outages. So the question is, of course, you know, we've gone from 120 to $130 per barrel on crude down to 100. But this is very much a short term phenomenon, i.e. in six months time, once and if things stabilize, we're going to have to refill those inventories Chinese demand is going to come back as the COVID situation normalizes. We'll come out of this kind of brief shoulder month and demand will really start picking up. That doesn't look like there's going to be any progress on the Iran front. So things are looking very, very constructive on a forward front, even if there, there might be some weakening in the short term. Right. So <clears throat> with this, you have the Biden administration as well who's looking to sell at rec you know, record amount of emergency oil from the national reserves. How, how good a decision is that to sell oil from the SPR? Because they're not looking at you know, working out a loan. This is probably marked as a trade-off right now. But do you think it's a good decision? I mean, going into, I mean, just like India finished elections and during that election period, there was a lot of sensitivity around um, the price of petrol and diesel at the pump. And similarly, the US will go into midterm elections in November. So the US's number one priority at the moment is to keep the price of oil and keep the price of gasoline down. If they don't do that and it blows out of control, then uh, Biden knows that his administration's chances of a re-election re are significantly weakened. So this is very much a geopolitical induced maneuver. Ultimately, that SPR in the US will need to be refilled. And therefore we see it more as kind of duct tape over a very, very big problem rather than a kind of um, a structural solution. Right. And, and clearly, if you see in terms of fair prices are concerned, what's the maximum we could see? Because we are seeing that volatility that has started to creep in. Yeah, so, I mean, volatility is the name of the game. We've been trading in a $30, $40, $50 range over the last, uh, particularly the last six weeks or so. And uh, given where the global inventory situation is, even before this SPR release, you know, we were 
uh, kind of multi-decade lows in terms of inventories and therefore the sensitivity to headline gets even more heightened. And so, you know, we would expect, you know, volatility to remain the name of the game. And we'd also expect oil to remain above $100 per barrel for the balance of the year. Right. And, and overall, with all of this said and done, uh, you know, clearly, if you go to see, you have IEA who has come out and said that, you know, the member nations will release around 60 million barrels over the next six months. And with the United States matching that amount as a part of its 180 million barrel release that they announced in the month of March, do you think there is a concern that by doing this and artificially lowering prices, you're only going to increase the demand and that's something which is going to burn off that supply pretty quickly? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. So I think it does do that. I think when we were trading north of $130 per barrel, there were really concerns around demand destruction. Uh, they seem to have gone away from now with Brent trading around $100 per barrel. Um, the question is, you know, how, uh, how much does the market buy into this kind of SPR release once the kind of near term weaknesses, some of the things I've already mentioned, name, name primarily um, COVID in China goes away, demand starts coming back. This SPR has already been released into the market. Um, and all it does is really offset to some extent the crude that was supposed to be coming into the market from Iran. So that still leaves that kind of hole that Russia has left. We wouldn't expect sanctions to be lifted anytime soon, given the kind of aggressive approach that Russia is taking. And so incrementally, it's just going to become more and more difficult for buyers to circumvent sanctions in and around trading Russian oil. Right. And overall, if you're looking forward to 2023 and beyond, do you think global producers will likely need to ramp up investments to both fill the Russian size gap in supply as well as restock the IEA strategic reserves? Yeah, so, I mean, I think what the kind of energy crisis of not even just the past six weeks of the past kind of two years have shown is that light or energy cannot be kind of switched on at the flick of a switch. Um, but you can ramp up investments today. And even in the US shale space, you know, uh, many producers that we speak to have said that even if they dialed up um, the activity levels today, you're not going to see crude hit the market for another six months or so. And when you extend that to the conventional producers in the rest of the world, take, for example, Saudi Arabia, beyond the spare capacity it maintains, it's already said that it's ramping up its uh, capex activity over the medium term. But the question is, you know, can it bring oil to the market very, very quickly, which is effectively what is required now, right now? And the answer to that is no. Right. And then overall, from here on as well, you know, how, how big a pressure point could come in, you know, in terms of pricing, if you have to look at the strengthening US dollar. Secondly, signals that the US Federal Reserve could raise the federal funds rate. How big a pressure point would that be for crude? It would take a little bit of steam out because a rising US dollar um, would mean that, um, you know, well, the, uh, it, it depends how the other currencies trade. But, um, you know, for the short term, I think a rising US dollar is obviously going to impact commodities um, and commodities trade in particular for import countries like India. Right. So, so currently, if you see in terms of the way crude has been panning out, we did see, I think, level, I mean, right now it's again gone down to below, say, $100 per barrel. Near term, what's the range that you're looking like at medium term? And do you think, again, crude could come back to $70 to $80 per barrel? And if yes, how long do you think it will take? Um, I don't see crude trading at 70 to 80 in the near term just because the inventory situation is so um, acute. I think um, in order to get down to those price levels, you would need to see a substantial slowdown in the global economy and moving towards recession levels. Now, when we look at kind of global PMIs, uh, industrial activity levels, when you look at employment rates, 
We certainly don't think that a recession is the base case, but if that were to happen, then you could see a significant softening in crude. But the way we see things, once demand picks up, once China gets over this COVID um, uh, blip that is having at the moment, in particular in Shanghai, then uh, the kind of trajectory and pressure for crude is to the upside rather than to the downside. Right. And Virendra, from your on as well, anything that we've missed that we need to continuously monitor uh, with regards to crude as well as on the natural gas front as well? Yeah, no, I think I think the most important thing you've already touched upon is uh, the kind of uh, investment levels and these sanctions that have been imposed, like if Russia, um, if the European Union does put sanctions on um, and stops, uh, puts an embargo on crude, then that's going to put a massive bid on oil. And the question is how quickly um, we move up rather than uh, how much downside pressure is there to crude right now. Absolutely. And I think these are going to be crucial times as well. Thank you, Virendra, so much for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to speak to you as well. Thank you. Stay safe and speak to you soon again. Okay, thank you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.